and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. We here at Angry Me Production want to thank our sponsor, Mobile Notary Mindy. She's certified with the National Notary Association. She's also bonded and E&O insured. She offers a wide range of services, including wills, powers of attorney, medical documents, healthcare proxies, living wills, certification of trust, assignment of personal property, HIPAA waivers, advanced healthcare directives, and 99 verification. You can find her on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Mobile Notary Mindy. You can also visit her webpage at TexasMobileNotaryMindy.com. That's TX, MobileNotaryMindy.com. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Uh, Ask which? Anquits. Anquits, okay. Ask the which works. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today we got Jonathan. Damn it, I just heard it and I just messed it up. Alkowitz. Asowitz. Ankowitz. Ankowitz. Okay. Jonathan Ankowitz. And the reason why I had him on the show, we were talking just uh, 15 minutes or so, just getting to know each other. And uh, a halfway decent guy. He, <laughs> fake it. Yeah. Fake it until you make it. Yeah. Fake it until you make it. But you you have an app for uh, a dating app that you're in the works with and everything. Uh well, let's go along and describe the reason why you made this app because the app is geared towards you can identify red flags. Well, it's not so much as red flags. So let me give you a rundown of exactly what the intent of the company that I'm creating is and then the application that we're building. So I'm building out a company called Start With Me whose entire aim is to better love relationships for everyone or in, in total. The first product is aimed at the section of being singled and just getting into relationships. And is a dating app, it's a hybrid dating application of in-person and online with the focus of concentrating on the self to raise the level of emotional intelligence and self-awareness standards in the dating world. So in order to enter the dating pool, you're required to go through a psychology-based self- Oh, no. Go ahead and repeat that last bit because it it lagged. I saw that. So the entire intent is for you to go through a psychology-based self-discovery journey to learn about yourself, to understand how you show up in relationships so you have a better understanding before you start in the dating world. Okay. So, so. basically basically what you're saying is, is the first – and and I'll let you finish. Basically, you want to – you want to help people work on themselves first before they start actual dating process, which is yes. that, honestly, that's phenomenal. Uh, there's so many people that, that, uh, as soon as they get done with a relationship, they're trying to get their, uh, get into something else, both physically and mentally. Yeah. And they're not reflecting on the things they've done, the things that didn't work, the things that did work. So the entire aim is that you understand where you are. So in the journey currently in the basic MVP, the minimum viable product in order to start getting people to start playing with it, um, you go through emotional intelligence, you understand what it is, and then you go and take a psychology quiz that they use in psychology to rate people's level of emotional intelligence. So you learn where you stand with emotional intelligence, attachment style, personality types, and then um, your love language. So... The reason for attachment styles, that's how you connect with people and then how you kind of problem solve in relationships. It's not compl completely tied to it, but it gives you an understanding. 
Okay. Personality types gives you an understanding of how you behave, right? Introverted, extroverted. Do you like being alone? Do you socialize? Where do you get your energy? Um, feeling set. Was it sensing versus feeling versus thinking? So do you make your decisions um, methodically through facts or do you go with gut feelings is kind of where it sums up to. And then you learn a little bit more about your personality types and how you show up. And then your love language is how you feel full. Like, how do you feel completed and supported in a relationship by your partner? And by understanding yourself and how you show up, you then have the ability to, at the very, even with whatever level of communication skills that you have at the time, it gives you the ability to understand yourself and communicate that as much as possible. But it also helps you. The biggest thing I really want to emphasize with it is, is when you understand yourself and know yourself, you grow a level of confidence in like self. What's the word? Not validity. Um, self. You build a, yeah. You bring us. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Um, you build a great level of self-awareness and self-confidence and understanding the things and boundaries that you want, right? Okay. Then there's hey. also going to be some modules in that journey that just kind of set some standard definitions and meanings so that like you kind of have an expectation of understanding of certain aspects in the dating world. For example, one of the modules, um, I don't have it in there yet, but I want to make sure it gets in there. It's going to be like, how to give, withdraw, and reestablish consent, setting okay. boundaries in relationships as well, right? Withdrawing boundaries or reestablishing boundary lines of certain expectations of, but there's a lot that goes into that. So I need to flush the content out very well before I start opening it up to other people. But no, that, that, that's uh, totally understand, understandable because you'll still have people that go out and, uh, I hate to say is the the romantic novel, uh, romantic novel, and that's what they expect a relationship should be. They they have like books of, uh, and it's fantasy romance, fantasy, yeah, yeah. Heavy on the fantasy part, and that's what they believe the relationship should be. And it's, I mean, they get it from movies, they get it from uh, TV, they get it from uh, books, but in all all reality. A basic relationship is two people that can sleep in the same bed, not kill each other, and help out as much as possible with each other. Yeah. I like to see it that way. Um, I also like to see it as um, a, a two people who are growing together and oh, yeah. sharing with each other with their... Uh, how do I explain that? Wow, I'm really lost for words. Experience. Right? Yeah, they are. Um, they they support each other and grow, and then they understand each other, and then realize the other person is an individual. This is one thing I'm trying to establish in this as well. Is to, um, you know, a lot of people tend to lose themselves when they get into relationships. They drop their friends, they disconnect from the rest of the world, oh, yeah. and then they rewrite who their lives are while they're with their partner, and then it fails, and then they have to go and refind all their friends again and reestablish yeah, themselves. Yeah. So I want to get it so that that's. We are welcoming and helping people understand their individualism and finding their sexy is the way I describe it a bit, right? Yeah. Understanding and valuing their own personal sexy. So they understand who they are, where they are. They have their understanding of their boundaries. So that when they get into a relationship, if they want to let those walls and those boundaries bleed into the other person, they can because once those relationships fail or go back, they have the ability to redefine what those boundaries and walls are again because they've seen them. They understand who they are and the edge of their lives are and relationships. Well, yeah, that that always com uh, comes uh, by that. Uh, like I said, a lot of times people like they get they get out of a relationship, but they want that companion. My father's this. Uh, I hate to say it, it's the world's worst because my mom passed, and he got into a relationship as fast as possible. And this wasn't because he wanted to be in a relationship. He wanted to be, he didn't want to be lonely. And the people that had that idea is like, and he, he, he sees that I'm doing well as a single person. He's like, how do you do it? I'm like, because I just realized that I should be being, making myself happy. And if somebody's with me and they like, they like to do the same thing, not even the same thing I like to do because I'm adventurous. If a person goes, hey, let's go hike a mountain. 
I might be huffing and puffing because I take horrible care of my body, but I'll still go just to see if it's uh, fun for me. And if it's not fun for me, I'll tell the person, say, hey, this wasn't fun for me. Uh, let's try some, uh, something else. But if it was fun for me, I, I found a new experience. I found something new with this person, and this person is with me, and we're sharing it. That that and that's actually a good part of a relationship too is finding out new things that you didn't know about, and, and because but, a new person came in. But you realize that sense of self love and the fact that you fulfill yourself is an extremely, I wouldn't say extremely. Oh, is it extremely rare? I don't know actually. From the I'm not a psychologist, not, but I couldn't. Not, but it's it, definitely it, rare from what I've come across. It, it's okay. It's rare because either. It's ego, or it it is it's it's the basis of our DNA. We are pack animals. No matter we what, are. we are pack animals. We are, and, and we feel uncomfortable without having some kind of companionship. If it be a friend, if it be a a, a lover or a significant other that you know every once in a while comes by, you feel fulfilled and everything. It, it could be a dog. A lot of people have pets now because of the whole uh, uh, 2020 stuff. And yes, we can't say the full stuff about that. I've gotten my freaking videos knocked down because I just said the words. So that's the reason why I'm saying it. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, we have to have companionship. And a lot of people, I mean, I hate to say it, and as a joke, you could create a whole different person inside your head and be like, you know, split personality, and you have your imaginary friend and everything, and you'd be perfectly well fine. Yeah, I, I've laughed my ass off at the conversations I have by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. It's it's sad but funny. Yeah. Well, so like, um, getting into the point of why I created the app is actually so a couple of years ago, three years ago now, I went into a divorce that put me into a massive suicidal depression, destroyed my entire world. At the same time that my marriage was failing, I was going through PTSD therapy with the VA. Um, so that on top of things was a little extra stressful. Then I ended up leaving my job and going to a startup during all of this stuff. And then the startup ran out of money around the same time my marriage started failing and it all kind of accumulated down. I lost all my retirement. I lost everything in the divorce. So basically I had nothing after that. And then the only thing I had, or the only reason that uh, perk I had at the time that I saw was that I had my son mm -hmm. and my entire world was like, I picked the gun up, put it to my head a couple of times. I was almost there. And then I chose not to because of my son. And then as I started climbing myself out of this dark hole that I was in, I started rebuilding who I was. And I was like, you know what? I have literally, my entire world has crumbled. I have no foundation. I can literally be any version of me that I want to be. So as I was regrowing the strength and trying to find, it's actually been three years since it all started. Mm -hmm. I would probably say the last couple months I've actually concentrated on that factor of being able to be happy alone like to the point where like because i i found myself being a bit promiscuous in order to accommodate my desire to be with someone okay. so i was looking for just physical outlets and to to get the emotional fulfillment and it's more draining emotionally than i realized but it was still like it was trying to satisfy that need so it took me some time yeah it, it like all my friends there they have a relationship they're in relationships and very uh, only like one other guy doesn't have a relationship and we're in the same boat where we finally got a good job we're finally going out and doing stuff and we're ha we're we're having fun i mean even by myself and it was, i'll go to dallas and uh just hang out there for like a day and a half rent a hotel and just have fun not try to pick up anything uh anyone just you know go to six flags go to they have they have an aviation museum down there and yeah it, it, it's awesome to look at i mean just this is stuff that you don't find in your own area because a lot of people they they have that hometown hometown mentality where they haven't mm. seen the world and 
they feel it's like, oh, well, I can't do anything because my wife doesn't want to do it or my girlfriend doesn't want to do it or my kid doesn't want to do it. Just, just, you know, just go. And then you go, hey, the, I did this and everything. They're like, oh, that was cool. I'll, I'll go next time. And then they want to go. I mean, yeah. it's just feeling f- the freedom of yourself mm-hmm. when you realize you can do anything you, you want to go and you're not being, you know, uh, drawn down and everything. That's a single pound uh, front. Oh, is there, well, there times that, you know, I wish that someone would go with me? Absolutely. Yeah. But as you've learned how to do that confidently on your own, as you get into a relationship, there's a level of that you're supposed to maintain. Yeah. Right. There's, and I'm, I'm pretty sure almost everyone is, is accustomed to losing that factor, especially in today's society, because of the way we've all been raised by our own parents and the way relationship patterns used to be in the past, things are changing and society is changing with technology evolving. Everyone's more accustomed to self-help. Everyone's more attentive to wanting to follow their dreams and passions And if you don't have a relationship that supports that, you're going to start noticing issues. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I've, I've had it a couple of times to where if, uh, I I was talking to somebody and it just, I just didn't feel anything because it just seemed like they were, I I don't want to say lower than me, but just, they weren't up to my speed. To where they were, they they seemed more lazy. Understandably, yeah. That's so. That's a, so. That's one thing I I'm having a lot, or I've noticed a lot of problems with when getting into the dating world. Is I feel like when I get to start to get to know people, I'm like, what do you do with your life? Where like, are you living? Like, what do you like? Do you just go home to a bedroom at your parents' house and then go to work and go back? Like, where's your life? Like, what part of life are you living? Oh, yeah. That's the one thing I, I have the biggest problems with. Because those, like, if that's what you want to live your life, all the power to you. But I can't have, like, it's not invigorating. It's not interesting to me. Like, yeah, that's the whole reason. Like, why started, that's the whole reason why I started doing podcasts. It was, it, it was a hobby. It's a hobby. But yeah. I, mean, I get to talk to interesting people and everything. But it's, it's also small amount of stuff. You know, I still go out to the range. Uh, uh, I've I've had a, like a good group of people that go with me and like, hey, can you help me out with this? Because I I'll go out there, I'll go out, uh, shoot a couple of rounds off, and then I'm just I get bored and I'll I'll leave. But it's just something to do throughout the day, and that's what that's another thing we're we're looking for is, you know, we can go out and do stuff that interests us. But most of the time, I end up talking to the other people that are at the range. Too, and we'll just have a nice sit down conversation and like oh yeah we came here to shoot i forgot <laughs> been there i i'm definitely a talker with randoms too <laughs> it is so fun and there it this is how bad it is there was this uh lady that was uh, the uh, the apartment complex that i live is kind of open so yeah. anybody can go in and, it, and it's really small and this and this i I don't want to say homeless because I think she might have had a home, but she just goes through the uh, because we have a lot of dumpster divers. Yeah, yeah. And she had like this shopping cart full of backpacks that she's found in the dumpsters and everything. And I was like, uh, hey, uh, don't mind me asking, what are you okay? Is you got some more because this is Texas heat. This is this is this is desert heat. It's hot, hot. It's a hundred and ten hundred and eleven here yesterday where are you at i live uh, a couple of hours east bay of or east of san francisco so okay. it's like an open deserty grass area first yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah yeah pretty much the same thing you're you're close to death valley it feels like it <laughs> but i was like hey do you need some water or 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 you know something because i got some snacks and and she's like She's like, no, I'm just doing my job. Your job? This is it. Yeah, the cops stop me sometimes, but I have to give them this paper that tells them that I'm allowed to go through the dumpsters and everything. And I knew it was a lie. But yeah. it's getting better. It was 
it was so hilarious because i was like go on ma'am you have my intention yeah. now. <laughs> let's hear the like, story you've made up yeah 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 i'm I, i'm all in now go right. ahead and she she's she's telling me it's like i have to go into the trash and pick up people's uh stuff that they toss in there and hopefully they can come back and go to my location and they can find their lost stuff because they accidentally threw it away i'm like okay that is she propagated it is it was so hilarious and i know she believes this is real because you know she's off a rocker but yeah she was she 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 had this tale that she was doing this for the benefit of other people so they can find their lost treasure and i was like oh, that you know that's actually kind of cute okay <laughs> well you need some water or anything no i'm fine and she just walks around i'm like okay you have fun <laughs> but it was it was adorable <laughs> that's hilarious it is yeah, those uh I've I've stopped and helped uh there was I was living in a town and uh I was actually with my kid. He was like three at the time. And this guy, like, I saw him crawl out of a bush and start drinking out of a puddle. And I was like, Oh geez, what's going on? Like it was a dirty puddle too. Yeah. I was like, oh god. I was like, uh like I got a few minutes. So I went out of the gas station, I grabbed a gallon of water or two, a couple snacks, threw them in a bag, threw 20 bucks in there went over dropped it off to the guy and i was just like you doing okay dude it's like i can't do anything to like give you a house or housing or anything but you know you just you're good and he's just like ah you know i became homeless he's like ah my kids don't care for me anymore and i just got left behind or something like that and like started developing mental health issues and like he's not schizophrenic but he was just like not delirious, but he had like this thing where he wasn't like cognitively always there. And then okay. everyone just left him behind. And he just kind of like, well, I had to find some place to sleep. And these bushes were cozy. And I was like, that sucks. Yeah. And that's another, that's another thing that, uh, it's and not to get off on the app. We'll come back to it, yeah. but it, it's kind of funny how, you can look at a person. I mean, what, what was it the time frame that you were down and out with your life? No, this, uh, no, this was probably before all that started. Okay. Things were still positive at that time for me. Well, you ruined the story entirely. So screw you. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at people that have horrible lives and everything and they're, and they're still going and everything, you can, you can pretty much go off on that and you go, you know what? My life's not that bad. I, I think I can go a couple more days more. Yeah. Now on the first part of your, your dating app, you're going through psychological stuff. How, yeah. how is the second part? So, um, so the flow of the journey is, is you're going to go through, you're going to take the quizzes, you'll watch a little video, you'll learn about the subject matter itself, then you'll go in, take a quick quiz, give you an answer, give you an idea of where you stand in that world, right? Are you emotionally intelligent or not? Here's a rating on low, medium, or poor, uh, low, medium, high, and then like you learn your attachment style, your personality type, love language, and then after you complete that, then you're given access to the dating pool. So the whole intent is for you to just get an idea to look at where you are. And then it turns into a normal dating app, right? But the whole thing is, is you've done the minimum level of work. So just imagine the conversations in the first date. Yeah. Right. First date conversations where you're trying to find common ground, common topic matters to talk about. You've got an entire journey about understanding yourself that you literally had to go through in order to enter this dating pool. So now everyone in that dating pool has a, a minimum level understanding of themselves, right? Obviously, some people have done a lot more work. Some people haven't, but it's a minimum but you still level. Have, you still have that commonality of, of you're doing this together and you're – everybody has that common goal of, hey, we're – even if it's the level and everything like that, but you have that commonality of, hey, I, I, I wanted to start this journey so I can find somebody else. And we we all have that one thing in common. We we took the test. We we learned more about ourselves. Do you think that people just go for the first part and just like realize they could probably just do this stuff 
out in the world, but you're still happy with that first part? Um, I would like to think so. Um, down the road. So part of this, well, so actually let, let me just give you a little bit of a preference. So this self-discovery journey is also going to be part of the other products that we're going to be building as well that are all going to be built on top of this foundation. So start with me. The dating app is aimed at getting into relationships. So the idea is we're going to set the standard, have a minimum level of expectations that people are going to do before getting in there. And then once they get into a relationship or not, or if they're already in a relationship, they'll go over to start with us, which is another, it's a relationship app that's aimed at people in relationships. You'll go through the same self discovery journey, but then you're connected to your partner. So you, you learn how your foundation, then their foundation work well together. So like if you're an avoidant attachment and I'm a fearful attachment, right? I'm scared that everything you're going to do is going to lead to you leaving me. Everything that you're scared of is that I just don't care about you or whatnot. Right. So it's, Like, or you're fear afraid to even face the issue at hand. So you tend to run away from all the problems, right? You're running away causes me to chase only making the problems in the relationship worse. <laughs> okay. So by understanding these small factors, right? You get an idea of like, okay, well they're in avoidance. So when it comes to hard conversations, they will avoid it. Right. But maybe mm-hmm. they've found a way to mask that or something. I don't know. He'll help prob- solve a level of problems because it's a very basic understanding of yourself and how people show up. And in doing so and learning about yourself and the various ways that you can show up, you tend to actually learn about the ways other people show up too. So you get that minimum foundation of information. Okay. Then you grow together. And the idea behind that is like, you'll like, okay, well now we're in a relationship. I've understood myself. You understand yourself. Now, how do we grow together in order to build that foundation? And then you can carry it on from there. Now, what, what populated this to the point to where you thought everybody needed this? Was it the three years uh, after you got on this? And it's like, Hey, I wish I had this. Well, so the journey actually started when my marriage started failing. Right. So when the relationship started failing, I did the first thing most guys typically do. And they go, okay, well, what's the problem? Okay. Well, one, we don't connect much anymore. We're not on the same page and working towards the same thing. And there's no sex in our marriage. What's, what do we do to fix this? Did you have a guy? We fix the marriage by fixing the sex. You make the sex more interesting. They'll open up more and they'll share their emotions more. And then now we'll have a deeper connected relationship. Oh, to God, you didn't do pegging. No, but (laughs) I'm not saying it wasn't on the table, but, um, (laughs) but it wasn't a conversation in the topic at hand. But the thing is though, is I tried to fix the relationship first by learning about sex and diving deeper, which because what? I was unaware of relationships and connections and communications and feeling fulfilled, I was aiming at the wrong thing with an understanding of myself and not understanding of other people. Why do you think the go-to is the sex? Say it again. I mean, why do you think the go-to is uh, you're a bad lover? I've always, I was always wondering that. Being a bad lover, like what's the go-to and why? Yeah, I mean, that, in, in guys' mentality, if we are not a, a valid lover, then the other person is going to just get rid of us. Well, so one thing that I learned through this journey is building desire and love. There, um, so love and desire are on two different spe- sides of the spectrum, right? You can't have, you can't be in a massive state of desiring your partner and feel that comfort of love because desire requires distance, mm-hmm. right? So you see them in their natural habitat. You see them being hit on by other people. You see them socializing, doing their own thing. That's when the sense of desire starts building is the distance where you're seeing them being happy and growing passionately. Um, and then love is a big fulfillment. So there's a combination of them too. But when it comes to sexually, it's, a sense of making them feel wanted, desired, comforted, and fulfilled all at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's this stay. I think when people frame it as bad, it's because they're unaware of taking care of the other person. 
right? Because you're going in there with the intentions. Ah, uh, can you hold on one second? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll pause it. Um, when it comes to being described as bad, it's a tendency of a lack of attention for the other person, and it's more of a selfishness, right? Because you're both there to accomplish a mission, right? Yeah. This is the kind of the way to describe it. Uh, you both have an aim, but the thing is, is desire in like that craving and fulfillment is all a learnable skill. Like you can learn how to build desire and build this stuff up. You can become a better lover by learning how to do all of the things that require making them feel fulfilled and loved. Right. And there's yeah. such a mental aspect to it. And that was one of the biggest things I took away when I started learning and diving into the world of kink and learning more about that stuff is there's okay. such a mental capacity to making love that it's you have to understand it in order to really fulfill it but it's a learnable skill some people naturally understand it in two other people so it's a lot easier right like if you're a giver you tend to be considered better because you're worried about them and their success and their enjoyment of the situation but it's like being a good host right if you need good conversation good yeah. mental stimulation good environment and then physical prowess <laughs> following yeah. through on yeah. understanding the world well, here, here here's the thing uh that i found out it's like uh there's there's this woman on tiktok uh uh nicole ortiz i think it is mm -hmm. beautiful woman gorgeous absolutely drop dead 10 of 10 you know what makes her like super super attractive in her videos you know what she's doing she's cooking uh a five-star meal and mm -hmm. it, it oh dude Dude, every time I'm like watching it, I had a friend of mine. It's like, oh, damn, she's hot. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to figure out how, how she's cooking this stuff. But that so that's desire right there, right? That's the <laughs> intense. Like you're seeing them execute on a passion. Yes. They, so I you're mean, excited that, because you're yeah. fulfilling their connection to their love. Like they're passionate about it. That that is that is 100 percent of 100 percent on that one. It, that yeah. exactly what it is because i i find her more attractive just by her not even you know just just because of her physical beauty yes she's attractive she got my attention by that and then she started cooking i'm like do i need to rob a bank like what what do i need to do to catch her attention yeah yeah I no no it, so that's one of the reasons i'm actually building this is because as i started diving into dating and getting back into the dating world i realized that like when you meet somebody who's passionate or has a passion and they're following their, this is one thing I always preach to everyone is follow your passions. Your passions will fulfill everything and you'll find happiness no matter what at some point, because yeah. it will just show up because you're happy because you're enjoying your passions. That, that is, that is absolutely true because you'll get into uh, well, like a one night stand or a, or just a passion in the night, and it end up that you're kicking them out. But when you when you do something together, like you're just reading in in a coffee shop, I mean, you could be just passionate about reading and drinking coffee, or just in that scenario, and you're not talking, you're not you're not having a conversation or anything, but you feel the companionship there, mm -hmm. and, it, and some people find that odd. I've, I've had people like I'm a very, I don't care about money yeah. and I'll end up buying something for a friend of mine. It's like, Hey, you don't have to do this, man. I, I, I was like, Hey, you, you wanted it. You're, you're out of luck and everything. Just pay it forward, man. It doesn't really matter to me. Me. I'm thinking ahead. I'm not thinking right now. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm thinking maybe one of these days that you go down there and you see someone that's bad of luck and you got a couple of bucks in your pocket and you're going, Hey buddy, there you go. And, and that's the right way to think, uh, think of things. So, yeah, that's, I'm the same way. Um, hold on one second. Sorry, kid. Go ahead, bud. We, you can. Okay. And, and if you hadn't noticed folks that are listening and everything, I uh, pausing because he, he's a father and his kids, uh, trying to get his, father's attention which is totally all right i've like i've said i've, I've had other 
guest that had to do the same thing. Either the dog walks in or anything. But we, we were talking for the last couple of minutes about our ADHD and how we uh, we get into a situation with you know partners and everything. We find something interesting and they want to be part of it. Uh, th we want them to be part of it too and see if they would like it and everything. Of course, it, it, it's guys in general. I mean, it's not just people with ADHD. It's just guys in general. We get we get something new and everything. We get excited about it, and we're like, "I want to share the world with this," but we don't care. But see it. <laughs> but look, it's my shiny thing. I like it. Yeah. It's interesting. Just stare at it with me. Yes, yes, it's absolutely awesome. Look what I built. So, yeah. uh yeah, and that's one of those things connecting. I, I totally forgot what I said. I know I, I was rambling on it, it sounded smart. Yeah. And then I Dude, forgot I, it. It, it. It's always the case. It's like we we did a we did this uh we did an AI uh intro for something for one of the videos and everything. And I was like, "All right, let's see if it sounds good." He came, he came out with it and everything. He said it and as soon as he finished up, it's like, that sounds pretty good. We tried for four hours to get the same thing he said, and we didn't get it recorded. Never. It, ha it never happens that way. It's a one shot, and it didn't work out afterwards. We, we were so pissed <laughs> off. Yeah. Well, so that's actually a good segue. Uh, or actually, I don't know if it's a good segue. Um, where is my brain? Um so we were just answering the question about um, being good in bed, right? So that's actually yeah. related to the third product that Start With Me is going to be building. It's called Flavor of Teal. Oh. It's going to be a relationship app for the sexual side of relationships. Okay. Okay. So that's the aim. So Start With Me is the individual while you're single and getting into a relationship, right? We're setting the boundaries. We're setting the standards, the expectations, we're starting to find a common ground that allows you to deal with your own personal understanding as well as then connecting and connecting with your partner. Then there's the relationship app. Start with us where you learn how to be in a relationship with your foundation, and their foundation. You learn how to build a secure and strong thing on top of it, whatever you want to house six kids, 20 yeah. partners, whatever your relationship structure is. Foundation is, is you understand them. They understand you. Then you work together. Third is Flavor of Teal, where you guys are learning. It's the sexual side of the relationship. It's a relationship app aimed at the sexual side of the relationship. Where you okay. learn how you show up, how you feel, how you connect. And then like you learn how your partner is. And then you learn, learn to build and understand each other sexually. Because there's a lot that goes into it in like a psychology level. Uh -huh. Like there's a lot of like sexual traumas and pat problems that people have had growing up or have never been exposed to, or even one thing I had this conversation with somebody about, um, super Christian family. This is the way it is. No, we have our normal sex and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but you can still have kinky sex in a, like a religious based relationship. Oh, yeah. yeah you don't need to include other people or have other people watch. That's yeah. just a, an extreme in one level. I was like, but you can still learn about your partner. You can learn how to fulfill your partner. Your so partner can learn how to me, fulfill you. So what you're telling me is just coming out of the shower, opening up your towel and doing the helicopter is not going to get it all done? Well, it depends on what your partner's into. Okay. If your partner's into that and they're like, hey, helicopter rides, I'm in. Sign up. Okay. Right? That might be a great way to start things. Okay. I just um, but most people in, in relationships they actually form these little patterns where it was like, oh, when they're doing that, that's like like I used to refer so I would instead of doing the helicopter, I would just go left and right, right? Do the whole slapping yeah. <laughs> leg to leg. Okay. okay. And uh that I'd call it my mating call. <laughs> uh <laughs> it was funny at first for the first year or two, and then I think she kinda when the the sexual side of the relationship started to die. I think that's when it was just like, well, it's not any fun anymore. Yeah. But. Yeah. That's, that's what I tell with a couple of comedian friends. They, they try to tell the same joke over and over again. And they keep on thinking, it's like, Oh, it's still funny. Right. I'm like, not when you heard it 15 times. Yeah. So then, so going back to where we were with things. So I started learning about kink and the sexual side of relationships in order to solve a problem that I thought we had 
not realizing I wasn't aiming at the right problem. I was aiming at a symptom of the problem. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So then when I tried to apply the sexual fix of making sex better in the relationship, it actually caused things to get more separated and didn't make it better at all. Yeah. So basically you have a lot of sex toys that you, you shouldn't have bought because it was, it was getting that way to the, out the door anyways. Yeah. It was like, well, we're not using these. Why am I doing this? And it, but then I started learning more and I was like, well, why is this not working? And then I started realizing and learning more about the mental stimulation of sexual stuff. And I was like, okay, well, that's all communication. That's understanding and learning about your partner and the things they're into. And then learning how to build a sense of desire and flirtation. There's this doctor um, out of Oakland here in California um, her website's called turn on dot love. She teaches these like awesome classes and a lot of them have to do with like sexual connection with your partner. And one of them that I really, I'm going to take soon. I haven't had a chance to take it yet, but like it's talking or was it being dominant without being sleazy? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like, that's a perfect topic matter of like connection there, right? Cause you want to learn how to excite your partner mentally through words because the mental stimulation is women are mentally stimulated oriented right they're not physically yeah. oriented as much as men are okay so if you can tickle that part of their brain you can turn it on more but learning how to do that is hard because it's all about communication verbiage how you're using it and then there's delivery and intake of it as well yeah so let's go into it I mean, I, I, do, I do this, uh, and this is just a joke, and th there are people out there that like to ha be officiated. Officiated? God, word can't say it because of dyslexia. Asphyxiation. There we go. Okay. Uh, which is basically a person that likes to be choked or uh, strangled while they're uh, having sex. Now, yeah. I have this joke is like, yeah, but when you do that, you have to have a color code. And this is the reason this is way too much. And this is, this is all right. But it, it's, this is it's the just shade a, of purple. I like to get. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you don't want to go blue. Yeah. <laughs> like when it starts turning purple, that's when we start releasing. Yeah. But, it, it, but it, it, it is one of those things that it is a kink for some people. And, and and I'm that that's to me that's a little bit extreme. It, it is. is a little bit extreme for another person because I do, I I, well, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But if, if the conversation comes up, it's like, hey, I like this. Well, I kind of kind of don't like doing that, and and I would explain it. Just explain it. What mm -hmm. the reason why it, it this is coming both from uh two people you're yeah. and what a lot of people don't understand is is you both are consenting adults and you both need to learn each other's limits yes well so that's one of the things that really attracted me to the whole world of kink is when you start diet when i started diving into it thinking that i was just looking for like ways to make sex better i realized the biggest takeaway i had from the kink community the people who are really into it there's a level of communication self-awareness and aftercare that is should exist in all relationships oh yeah just do not like there is a level of communication there the like the level of self-awareness the communication consent one thing that i really loved about the king community is the consent driven communication patterns like there everything is about like hey if i didn't consent to it it's not on the table yeah so and it's learning yeah. about how to share it talk about it yeah i mean if it slips in it slips in that whole notion well but, yeah that's a that's a different thing <laughs> yeah but it, it 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 is one of those things that uh, I was talking with a buddy of mine's wife, and he was getting uncomfortable with saying, "I was like, hey, dude, I'm I'm not trying to. If you want me to stop, I'll stop." But she yeah. was like, "No, I'm interested in this topic. We're both adults. I'm not going to try to do anything with him, but yeah, he he needs help because it was all about. I was I was asking advice about you know." Uh, toys because my now adult daughter was like she was experimenting in that field and I was like 
I don't feel comfortable talking to my daughter about this, but I will find a female if you if to to help you out. If if your mom if you don't feel comfortable talking to your mom about that, she was all right with it. So, yeah, I, I found friends that are in the female orientation that helped me out with that because I'm not going to talk to my daughter about that stuff. I just yeah, that's a hard that's a hard conversation to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost as, it, it it's it. It is really hard because I was like, uh uh, nope, nope, I'm putting my foot down. But people are like, well, no, you feel comfortable about talking that to your daughter. No, 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 but I will get her the help she needs. Yeah. Well, so this is actually one of the intriguing things, uh, or one of the thought processes behind a lot of this is is P we nobody's been obviously raised by the same parents so nobody has the there's not as much commonality or understanding across all these topics and awareness across all these topics when it comes to relationships like so the like for example start with me all of these quizzes that you go through they're all used in the psychology field to evaluate and measure certain levels of pers people's personalities under certain theories but they've been around for 20 30 years really like they've been available all of these things have been available to people at different aspects but the thing is like look at mental health how many people are going to get mental health yeah like, you're fixes, absolutely right right like the pro the fix has been around for a long time but the thing is there was going to seek that knowledge and understanding is not a commonality i like, think i think where where that is for like mental health and everything and and the idea of uh, seeking out help help in general, one, it's part of the whole ego trip to where, no, I can take care of it myself. Even even though the whole building is f on fire, no, I can take care of this. But it's also that step that that person needs to make for themselves. Hey, I can't handle this anymore. I need to find a solution and help to do that. So and. and in uh in false motivation.com like so my coffee company false dash motivation.com it's a bunch of veterans we created a podcast in order to help create like in a value towards the product like right? so the product is supposed to support all this but we talk about mental health and we talk about understanding and finding yourself and being used to getting it more comfortable and acceptable um but that was a lot of the orientation behind getting comfortable talking about this stuff because nobody wants to go and do it themselves and then everyone thinks they can go do it themselves but then when you go through and you actually experience these big dips you don't realize what it is until you've been too deep into it or it's even it i had this conversation with uh with my family well mostly my dad is we will have a conversation with somebody and they'll they'll freak out and like did y'all really do that? It's our normal. Yeah. We we've we've grown up with that. We've lived with that. We've we've dealt with that. We don't see it as a problem only because it's our normal. But to another person, it can't be that normal because it's just out there. I mean, uh -huh. I, my mother was like bipolar schizophrenia. When a part bipolar schizophrenia, people are like, "How could you talk with that person?" Well, it's perfectly normal to me. Yeah, it's like I grew up with it. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. But so that's actually one of the reasons why I created Start With Me in the structure that it is, is because I realized that there's not a common level between everyone. And then we're all trying to go out there and date each other. And the fact that technology has opened up society across the entire world and country, right? Your dating pool is no longer just your 80 mile radius near your house, right? It's yeah, you can go date people across the country while you're trying to find and understand your personalities meshing together and like figuring out who your soulmate is or your partner. But it's it it, it is kind of uh, really difficult for that because I've always had this uh, understanding is like, what, what, what if I do find that person and that other person's like across the uh, across the country and we both have established careers already. I mean, we're doing well. Do we? take that chance and that comes down to you figuring out what you want in your life yeah what life do you want to live yeah exactly right
So that's one of the reasons I so start with me, start with us, and flavor of teal is meant to get people onto a common level understanding and self awareness. Because the only thing you can control in a relationship is you. Yeah. It's the only thing you have control over. You can't force anyone else to do anything else. One thing that really blew my mind was during this this relationship thing where I was trying to heal things and try to get things right. I learned um, the statements from this guru, and guru. Um, I listened to him on YouTube. Um, he was talking about resentment being a disappointment you have in other people for not behaving the way you want them to. That's okay. why you resent people. Okay. And that understanding, cha- like it shifted a concept in my brain to see things so much differently because your disappointment is in them not behaving the way you want them to, even yeah, though yeah. they're an individual. Yeah, because you have like uh, certain thoughts of how a person's supposed to act and everything, but their their thoughts are something totally different. And, and with it, it's mind, it, it don't, it's a mind fuck when you just figure that out. It is, and it blew my mind. And then when I started getting back into the dating world, and I started realizing that people all over the place have different levels of expectations and standards. Mm-hmm. Right? You can go on a date with one person and be like, "Ooh, no, you don't do that in relationships." Or you do that and you're like, what? That's perfectly fine in a relationship. And you're like, no, it's not. Or why is my house on fire? Yeah. Right. You start learning all these different barriers. And so this is what I, my intent is, is to get people on the same level, not in a, like, this is the way it needs to be. I hate that mentality. It's a, Hey, here's a common ground. Take it this way or that way. That's your choice. But here's a minimum group understanding. Yes, you're absolutely right on that one too. Because but that comes, yeah, it, it comes just with you know the whole thing to where, hey, maybe if I draw back and we just you know have a conversation of what the expectation on certain things, like putting certain things like a uh, pineapple on pizza. I'm I'm in the I'm in the factor of it shouldn't be on there the person should be exercised and get that demon out of their soul. <laughs> but there's people that like the sweetness on a pineapple or, or well, pineapple is more like sweet, bitter, but you know, it's just it's baked. yeah. Yeah. But you know, that atrocity. Yeah. Is loved by certain people, which, you know, camps come to mind, but, Anyways, but you have to, you have to conversation. It's like, okay, well, half pineapple, half this, then it's simple, but people can't understand that and making that kind of compromise. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's a big problem. A lot of people have is understanding and accepting other people. The yeah. best quote I ever heard. So this actually comes from that lady who did the turn on love, turn on dot love. Like her, uh, she had a, it mounted on the wall when I went into one of the classes. Um, never yuck anyone's yum. Yeah, I love I, that quote, and because it applies to everything. I also say, don't kink shame just because you don't well, like it. No it but it's not just about kink shame; it's about interest. Shit. It's about interest oh, yeah. and flavors and like. Pineapple on pizza. That's a yum for some and a yuck for others. Don't yuck their yum. And you're like, all it is yeah. is just, hey, let people enjoy themselves and the things they want to enjoy. You know, other than pedophiles, that's not appropriate. But other yeah. than that, the rest of the world, like, I don't see any other problem other than, like, as long as you're not hurting anyone, you're free. Like, just yeah. enjoy. I, was like, uh, I, I, I carry around a fanny pack. You know, I'm not ashamed yeah. of it. Yeah. I do it for certain reasons, convenience, and most of the shorts I have can't really hold all the stuff that we have. We have to carry nowadays. I mean, we had yeah, to carry. Right. Oh, we got to carry our wallets. We got to, and sometimes you could combine that stuff, but you still don't. It, my shorts fall down because I'll have this string holding my pa- pants up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, a lot of my friends is like, I can't believe you have a fanny pack on. And I had one friend that do the same thing. He's like, I can't believe you have a fanny pack on. And the next week, I look at him. I was like, is that don't say a damn word? And you're absolutely right. And go fuck yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I'm. I'm Did you realize the value? Oh, yeah. 
I mean, it, it's it's just one of those things. Is sometimes you just gotta you gotta try at least once, and if it's not you know your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. I was like, uh, my dad cursed me for the longest time not carrying a knife on me, not just a regular pocket knife. Yeah, I finally started doing it, only because all I had to do was take the knife and put it in my left side instead of my right side because for some reason anything on my right side makes me feel uncomfortable but if i put it on the left side i'm perfectly fine intriguing it 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 makes no sense but it's there (laughs) it's the what It, it it's basically there it's one of those uh uh idiosyncrasy Eater rocket. Uh, candy. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I can't think of the word though. Yeah. But it's just one of those things that just, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to that person. Yes. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that other people are living their lives. And just because you have an opinion doesn't mean yours is correct. Oh yeah. I mean, for the longest time, I would rope down my window and still have the AC on. My dad would tell me, hey, you're going to blow out your AC motor. I'm like, I don't I don't think that's right, Dad. But his thought was a constant with that. And then finally, I was like, Dad, I am, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's XYZ and not YXX. And we reviewed it, and the the ac motor does go down in a car but it does it itself and it's not because it's overheating or anything like that it's just it runs constantly no matter what yeah and i had to show him that and he thought this for probably he's 68 he's thought this for 50 years well that's an old mentality I grew yeah. up being told the same thing, and I'm like, wait, the motor runs the same speed in in rotations, whether the window's open or not. Yeah. What? I'm like, just the window being open is not going to put more pain on the motor, yeah. just because it's being ran differently than what you were expecting it to. Well, it's Unless awesome. you have like a system that boosts up because it gets hotter, then it increases in like if it puts it into like a more intense mode and increases the rotations per second or something, then maybe you get more wear and tear. Yeah. But if it's I, not I, doing that, I don't see it. I, I, I seriously don't think that there's a, there's a vehicle that has that though. I mean, the, the, even I the uh, dual dual uh ac units where i was like oh you can be com- you can be hot on this side and cool on this side it doesn't work it's just it, well when it, you get into the me- mechanisms that use them they're basically just controlled by different thermometers There's yeah like, this one says hey we're at the right temperature we're not so turn it on turn it off yeah right. but uh <laughs> what what got you into uh motivating speaking because you 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 populated this whole thing i mean you just like uh fitness uh motivation speaker and then you what 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 shined me up and i was like oh i gotta have this guy on the show was was the dating app and everything and i it, it is interesting of of the steps that you're trying to make to make a healthy relationship with people or for people yeah what what got you into uh doing motivation speaking too um, I, I've actually don't do motivational speaking, but I am told I should because I am very passionate and motivated about everything. I just let to my personality go and not control it for the most part. So I like to be excited about whatever I'm doing. And it, because probably because I have ADHD, when I dive into something, I'm all in. I'm like, dude, right now, this is the moment. This is what we're doing. We're changing the world to this podcast episode. Right. Just by getting the information out there. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it has to do with, um, when I got back into the dating world, everyone's like, dude, like I've been told like how many times now I don't even know. It's been so many, like I've been, it's weird because it sounds super conceited to say it. And to me, it's still really hard to just say, but it's like, people are like, you're my, you're my growth mode. Like you're my growth goals. 
my personal development goals. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm your personal development goals. They're like, you're confident and happy with who you are. And you've clearly done work on yourself. And then you understand who you are. And you're confident with who you are. I'm like, wow. (laughs) And you say it that way. Yeah. I'm aware of what I want. I am aware of who I am, the things I like and don't like. And I know my boundaries and you can't convince me like opposite of that. Like I understand it. And that's the self-awareness and that's where like, so start with me and all this stuff kind of came from me wanting to help people in relationships, learning how much I've grown to help relate my own relationships, but then also learning how much I've rebuilt myself to be this version of me. And people are like, dude, you just dry, you radiate energy when you're in a room and you're just doing your thing. And that goes down to like uh, the desire factor too, right? It, it's I'm doing my thing because I'm passionate about it and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, that oh, Someone once told me it was like, you have some crazy confidence. You just go up to anybody and talk to them. It's like, it took me so f- I. I, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. I don't have my shit together now or ever, but I just say, fuck it. Let's try this. But you don't need to get together. You just need to be confident with who you are. Yeah. Well, no, no, that's no, 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 no. That's what I, that's what I, uh, that, that I, that I yeah. do my, for myself. I mean, I, I just like, it, I, it's that I, if I have like a decision, it's like, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I, I literally tell myself inside my head, fuck it. It's not going to kill you and just do, go ahead and do it. Uh, there's a whole reason why it's like I started the podcast stuff. I was thinking about it and then and then I was like, what else am I doing with my life? Let's let's see if I can at least uh, I have the goals is like, let's see if I can just have interesting people to talk to. And right. and I I end up having like wonderful conversations with people. I think only like once that I had an issue with the other person, and it wasn't it wasn't uh, they just ended up coming uh, coming onto the show drunk, and the show just ended up horrible. And I was like, hey, I I can't do this with you anymore until you get yourself cleaned up. And if yeah. I'll, if if you're just drinking now because you think it's a fun day, but if you have a problem, maybe you should. And like two or three days later, it's like, dude, nobody's told me that I needed to go get help. I'm like, seriously? How was how was your help? I'm surprised. <laughs> That's you know, feedback is something people are not accustomed to, and I'm actually surprised when because I have no problem telling people like, hey, you know, like maybe you. Should, Look at this behavior. It's affecting other people. That's where like, if it's not affecting anyone else and I'll point it out, like if it's affecting them, I'll point it out. But I also have no problem pointing out when people are making problems for other people too. And yeah, people don't do that. And I don't understand it. Well, it, one, it's a hard thing. So this is also one of those things where I think like in the dating world, like you get all this ghosting, right? You get all this, like, Hey, just cut off the conversation or cold Turkey. Like just, Hey, I will ghost you, right? And the whole point of ghosting is that you're not talking to them ever again. Yeah. Yeah. It's more or less chop off the chop off the limb and just go on about your business. Yeah, but I think it has, I think that one, that's super messed up. Cause two, that if you that really think about it, doing it. So I, that person probably doesn't know he's doing it. Well, a lot of people do it and they don't. Well, I think that they do it because they're afraid of the confrontational conversation that comes with it. When to say, Hey, I'm not interested in you. The dreaded why is usually the first follow on, right? It's like, wait, what, what did I do wrong? I'm like enjoying your attention. Why are you not enjoying mine? Right. Okay. Okay. So it's like, it's the why. So then you have to provide an answer and you're just like, well, I think you're a shitty human being and I don't like being around you. Like some people can't have those conversations or like your personality is really annoying for me and I'm not enjoying it. Like this is, I'm taking it to an extreme, but the reality is, is like if you gave people some feedback and you're like, Hey, you're just way too clean. You know, you make me feel like you want to be married tomorrow. It it was, I just had the thought is just the, the scene is like, uh, 
you know, you're just going over like the day, uh, you're taking like a, a questionnaire and like, yeah, he's doing that. Yeah. Oh, no, don't like that. Yeah. I like that. No. And then you hand it to other, to the other person. They do the same thing to you. It's like, Oh shit. Do I really do that? Cause I had a, I had a, I had a, a friend of mine, whenever she's trying to figure something out in her head, she has this twitch in her eye. I mean, legitimately a twitch in her eye. Oh, that's true. And- it, it 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 was hilarious to me, only because she was trying to uh, explain something, and it was like a switch in her head was malfunctioning, and you could see it. <laughs> and I told her this. I was like, you do realize when you're trying to explain something and you're trying to figure it out, your eye twitches? She's like, no, it doesn't. And I... I, I Pulled up my phone, put it on the camera, and I uh, put it in her face. And I was like, explain it to me. And I was holding out. So she was like looking. At, I do have a twitch. Why would you say that to me? I'm like, listen, now you know you have this. Yeah, it's See, not a problem. And if you can't fix it, and whenever I'm laughing a little bit, now you know why. Because <laughs> I find it hilarious. Exactly. Like I got quasi, I call it my quasi meadow eye. I got Bell's palsy like a year ago. And oh really? My eye droops now. Yeah, my whole face side of my face went numb. It was gnarly. Oh, so you, you, you know, Paul Whitaker. He 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 owns that. Just remember that. Okay, noted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it was interesting. It was definitely um an intriguing journey to have because now my face is droopy. Even now, like I get it to the point where it doesn't work properly all the way. But is it, is it just it, every it's once in a while it just droops down, but it just goes back or is just constant? Um, well, now it just it doesn't perform the way my left the left side of my face does. Just my right side responds differently. So if like I'm tired or if I have allergies, my eye will close and respond less. Okay, but it, it's due to nerve damage. Somewhere, oh, okay. somewhere around this area, a nerve pops up through the skull and like radiate and fills the whole side of your face. And then huh. with that, if that nerve is damaged, then that whole side doesn't respond or receive signals properly. So it doesn't work properly. That's, I'm, I've, I've never heard it explained. So I just, oh, yeah. Super. I, I, well, I like to deep dive into things. I'm a nerd. So I like to dude, nerd hard. You couldn't tell in the background. I'm not a nerd at all. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. But uh, no, that was the whole reason why I started doing like uh, the serial killer podcast is because I, I do research. I, I love doing research. And there are times that I go over stuff and I was like, oh, OK, he did this, 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 this. And then when I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, 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 that I don't know why I didn't pick up on that and make a little joke on on, on that when when I saw it. I was like uh, the Ant Hill Kids. Uh, it was a a cult, and that was another thing I wanted to talk to you about on that one too. But uh, it it was a cult, and one of the women died, and they uh, drilled a hole and did a bukkake to re- that was their resurrection spell. Oh Jesus. And, and I, I wrote all this stuff that I was just like, go, I, it's it's a different level of concentration when you're reading and you're and you're just copying stuff from an article. And it's like, OK, yeah, 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 OK, yeah, yeah, OK, OK, you got that. Yeah, you're consuming it differently. Yeah. And it's and it's so weird that you you how you consume stuff differently. And and speaking on the. uh the aspects of uh cults though do you do you want to bring people together to where uh they can use this knowledge to where they can uh benefit themselves and you know fill that void of uh well a lot of people call it tribalism a lot of people just companionship yeah. or 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 tribe uh but that like like we were talking before we talked uh we were going on the show uh, that's in our dna yeah no we're definitely designed to be grouped up and finding our people that's why i think we have a lot of desires of like finding those groups and that's probably what a lot of our problem in society is today is a lack of con- community 
because mm-hmm. like growing up where I, I grew up in a small town, Barrington, New Hampshire, tiny, tiny town, right? Tiny, tiny state, tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny, tiny town. Right. And I lived deep out in the woods and, but we had like a community center and every Sunday, everyone would get together and have a giant barbecue. I grew oh, up okay. where you'd leave the house door open on the weekend if you left for the weekend so that your dogs could go in and out of the house. No, right? I totally understand that. Yeah, and then, like, I grew up, my neighbors, even today, like, if I go home and visit my fa- parents' house, my neighbors would just walk in the door, go grab a beer from the fridge, and like, hey, is mom and dad home? Like, well, I'm, uh, you know, we're going to go play poker or play pool or go do something. But it's just, like, community like it's real community and it's beautiful to see but i live in california and i know two of my neighbors <laughs> and that's it like i grew up living in a cul-de-sac and the person the family that lived across from the cul-de-sac for me we didn't actually get to become friends with them until like year five of living there oh wow yeah i and had a and their neighbors we the one next to them we never even got to know but we live in this cul-de-sac yeah i I have i have the same thing if i know if i know the person we've you know been talking for a while i'll just walk right in i don't have any problems with it It, uh it now if a person tells me it's like hey i don't feel comfortable you doing that yeah i'll knock before i can uh i knock you know know, that's all you had to do to tell me only once it kind of messed me up because a friend of mine forgot to tell his wife (laughs) and i i I'm still, I'm still in that mentality and everything. I open the door, she's in her panties, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna knock now." Click. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, knocking forever. Oh, I, call, sure. I, 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 I speed dial my friend. I was like, "Dude, I just saw your wife in your underwear. I, I I'm sorry that sorry. I did this. Uh, I didn't mean to. You can uh, punch me in the face if it like. Yeah, or I could beat myself up in the corner so you know you don't kill me or whatever." You know, at least I know I can, I know when to stop myself. Uh, but, uh, and he was like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell her that you're stopping by. Cause he's, he's the same way. He, yeah. he knows if it's, he, he's part of the family, he can walk right in. He doesn't yeah. not, he doesn't do anything. And uh, all my f- family friends do that. We're like, Hey, what's up? Uh, some of them like give a grid tap and, Couple of them yeah. don't know the reason why, especially if I was if I was working nights and you'd, yeah. they would come by the door in the day. They knock just to make sure, you know, I was somewhat coherent. Or <laughs> loud noises might happen on accident. Yeah, but no, I, I totally understand that. It's it's just weird how, and I don't I don't want to blame like the internet because it's really. Uh, I, I think the best way to say it is, it's depending on, uh, the countryside and the city side. City side, you know, things are getting taken care of on the uh on on certain things. Yeah, the countryside, you might need to call somebody to help you dig a ditch because you can't really do it by yourself, yeah. or it's going to take you know a couple of weeks. But if you get your neighbor since he needs to dig a ditch too and go hey buddy i'll i'll help you out with yours you come over and help out with me all right cool and it's that kind of community and that's where we got we got away uh away from if we actually go in and help help our neighbors out or i mean i do that all the time they i i do it to the point to where I've kind of pissed off at myself for doing it because I keep on getting knocks on the door. I'm like, Hey, can you help me out? It's like, yeah, I hate you. I don't want to. I don't. Well, that's the hard part, right? That's a ba- that's yeah. a boundary that you're trying to do. Yeah. I, I, but, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. I'm the same. Like I, I volunteer. That's actually one thing I've been working on is not volunteering. Right. Because I have a tendency of volunteering too much. And the next thing I know, I'm overcommitted and I get nothing done, especially when it comes to stuff that I need to get done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Totally. Because totally I'm like, hands. I've got, I'm a jack of all trades. So, yeah, you got a problem with that? I can help you with that. Yeah. I can help you rewire that. Yeah. I can help do the plumbing. Yeah. I could. I could. It's going to take hours and days and, you know, but it consumes all my time. The best but way. In- yeah. Best way to avoid that stuff. And it's like, hey, let me check my schedule and see if I'm doing anything. 
And let me get back to you in about five, 10 minutes. Just give me five, 10 minutes. And usually they found somebody else out. I'm like, <laughs> I've actually come to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I've just come straight forward with it. I'm like, I could, but I really don't want to. Yeah. And I'm telling you, but the, the, all right, here's the funny thing though, is if your friend tells you they don't want to verse, they could, right? Like, Hey, I could, or if they give you a blow off, but it, it's the truth is so much more welcoming and you can't resent people for telling you the truth. Like I, I just don't want to do that. So I'm not going to. Oh yeah. You can't hate them for it because you're like, well, I don't blame you. Okay. There's things I don't want to do. So um, that's one of them. Right. They just my, my, thing is, my thing is, is because of the, the, the people around me that I've grew up with it, it, they always try to guilt you to do it though. Yeah, and, but now I'm like immune to it, and they're like, "Hey, can you help me do?" I was like, "No, dude, I don't want to right now." And and, and they're like, "But man, it would really." Be. I was like, most most of the like true true friends of mine, if I say no, they're like, "No, he he's helped me out so much. He's telling me the nicest possible way to go fuck himself." Yep, <laughs> yep. That's communication right there. Um, back to your question though about creating society and connections or you want to rephrase your question i have an answer for it okay but i got a little sidetracked creating creating an app that connects people uh the way that they should have like you know in a tribe and everything are that that the only thing and when when dealing with like uh trying to create something like that you get cults i'm not saying you're yeah. trying to create a cult but if you call no, me best no. hey, dude, I accidentally did that shit. You called it. You had it would be hilarious. Dude, I will totally call you if this turned into a cult like thing, it would be hilarious. But no, so what it's actually one of the reasons I actually chose the approach that I chose, right? No, okay. so I chose psychology being the foundational understanding because beside culture, it's a fundamental human need, right? Like it's yeah. it, it ignores culture. It's below, it's the foundation below culture because it's the human need of connection and fulfilling, right? Mm -hmm. The emotional support and connection you have with other people is like a psychological psychological need of humans irrelevant to the culture they're in. Each culture will have their different ways of fulfilling those needs. Mm -hmm. But at the very base foundation, it doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, what sexuality you are. The fundamental needs of understanding yourself are the same no matter where you are. Yeah, and that, that's what a lot of people, I mean, it's not like we had an incident where the person was depressed and his parents didn't even you know, pay attention and they were psychologists. We didn't have an incident that that happened just recently. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. But it's, yeah, so it's the individual, yeah. right? Um, but so the under, individual learning and understanding about themselves, but so this is one of the reasons, so this is one of the big secret or not secret. This is, I guess you could say one of my secret intents of underneath this entire project is, is so if this dating app takes off greater than Tinder, Tinder's got 79 million users across the world right now. Yeah. It gives you a foundational understanding of yourself and how to show up in relationships and understanding yourself better. And when you do that and you increase the quality of your communication and understanding of how you're showing up in relationships, it's well, I'm aiming at love relationships. But when you learn how to do that in relationships in general, it's going to trickle across all of your relationships. Yeah. That, you, know, when you can make your professional and your personal, like your best friend feel more supported and loved. Right. Without yeah. having to like do anything extra. You're just doing that because that's how you make people feel better in relationships. You're increasing the quality of your personal and your professional relationships. There'll be a trickle down effect. And then this information will then trickle down to all of the user, all of the users, all the users, kids, their generation of who they raise or the friends that they give insight and instruction to, right? When you understand yourself better and then you're like, Hey, my relationship changed when I understood my boundaries better. I know how to say no to people at work now. I know how to set my time alone. I know how to stand there together with everyone and still be my own individual. Yeah. When you it, learn that stuff. It trickles out. Well, it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things people say when they're, you know, I was like, Oh, I just started dating. And their first words were like, I haven't done this in a while. I don't know what I'm doing. 
or 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 they had like a horrible breakup and you're like hey i i don't know what i'm uh, i'm doing so and, and my 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 suggestion was like someone asked me i was like hey you're you're you have kids uh how will, uh how do you be a good parent i i i literally i was like you know what i got an idea and and i do have a little bit of good idea fairies and sometimes it pans out i went to a store got a got a like a blank book handed in the book and it's like put down all the fuck ups that you do as a parent and then when when you have it uh figured out and everything hand that to your kid and he's like but you're not going to give me any kind of advice. That is the advice because no one knows what the fuck's going on. No. You have an expectation of what you want and then yeah. you're trying to figure out how to get it. <laughs> yeah. But it goes with relationships the same way, though. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's everything in, in life because you don't you don't know what that person's absolutely thinking. And I've 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 deep dive people that uh, married serial killers. And they convinced people, they convinced them. I was like, there was, they literally found a human skull in their yard. And the other person convinced them that it wasn't, it was probably just a dog's head. And I'm like, how? how you that? might want to go back to school and educate a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> but also at the same time, there's probably a level of not wanting to believe it, right? So you're wanting it's to believe exactly. certain aspects. But so this is like, one of the reasons concentrating on yourself is the intent that I aim for because you don't have control over other people. So if you educate yourself and you become stronger, more confident self, then you can help wade through all the crap that other people try to put you through. Yeah, I can. Give, it's it's one of those things is I can give you those tools. Yeah, I, I, I and I tell I, I tell everybody is uh, it's like when I'm when I'm training somebody to do something. It doesn't matter what I'm training them to do. You know, it could be the stuff that I'm doing up at work. It could be like cooking. It could be anything. I I, I can teach you how to do this, but put your spin on it because you're going to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. I can't control you. I can't tell you. It's like the only thing I can tell you is this is the reason why you shouldn't do it, and this is the reason why we don't do it. I can give you yeah. the reason why. And, and, but if you figure out a, a better solution, bam, but that goes that. So that, that's a very similar mentality that we, or philosophy that I take as a building this company is we're not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. This is another reason why I, I won't use algorithms to match people down the road later when, when things are more established and we have more data, we'll run experiments and people can opt into them, but algorithmically matching people clearly if you look at the relationship structures nowadays like we don't know how to match people like divorce rates are insane no we AI, don't know how to match humans the a by lord gods are all knowing and you need to step back from that i'm avoiding yeah. all of that crap like because this is it's a personalized world when it comes to love and relationships so bringing in anything that's unauthentically an individual is against what i'm trying to build I totally understand that. And, and it, it, it really is. I mean, you can't really, you can't have somebody go out and, uh, basically it's like, Hey, I like, I like racing cars. The other, most of the time, a woman's not going to enjoy racing cars. She's going to be enjoying seeing you accomplish stuff and or getting happy. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it, it's going to be very rare. But yeah. there are there are women that, you know, drive vehicles and everything that uh, you know, race car, <laughs> race cars and everything. But how, how, how are you going to find that person? Are you going to find that you're, you're looking at like it's like that uh, all those women that keep on going online, like on TikTok and everything is like, I want I want a person in finance. I want uh, I want yeah. to I, I want I want. Uh, I want him to, to know what he's uh, uh, going to accomplish and everything, fair skin, and and all the good things in the world. Or you have that that really. I, I'm I'm gonna say Jabba the Hutt, uh, going. Oh, he needs to make 
500 K or I'm not even going to talk to him. It's like, what? No, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I mean, if you get that more power to you, I, I, I will be impressed because well, this is 1% of a 1%. Yeah, well, so this is one of the reasons I have this theory that when people spend the time to understand themselves and learn about themselves, they'll put themselves deeper into reality, right? Yeah. They'll they'll force themselves into a certain world because you can only look at yourself so much and go, ooh, yeah, I'm sitting on the rainbow versus yeah. sitting on melted crayons, right? It's just, you gotta find you. I don't know, the, I don't know how to explain that. I don't think I have the words. For, I'm going to work on explaining that one better. And well, okay. Let me let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, it the best example I, I can do is is like this this interview. One one woman was uh, I guess she was single and she was like, if if he doesn't have a car, if he has if he doesn't have a nice car, a good job, blah blah blah. And the other woman on the other other aisle the boyfriend was making 20k she is just like oh he only makes like 20k he has a, a the car runs against them point a and point b we're happy he gives me uh uh i still work and he he he, he works double hard and she sees his struggle just to make it make her happy and she's happy just with the bare minimum and people are like oh she's just no, that you're you're not seeing the love there. You you they don't people there's people out there that can't even understand that kind of concept of it you know comes seeing, out of the values. So yeah, seeing a personal struggle just for the other person. I mean, it when a person doesn't see that you're doing that, I honestly I would I would drop them. I mean so, like, if you can't see that kind of you know, accomplishment for you. You're not paying, you're paying attention to yourself and you're not paying, it, it, it sucks to say this, but you're paying attention to yourself and you're not paying to, toward that other person, how much they're struggling. Yeah. People will do, Yeah. I think it's definitely an opinion of values, right? You're valuing certain aspects of things that either do or don't make sense. They make sense to you, but they may not be, a good version. <laughs> I want to say educated, but I hate, I hate referencing to people being dumb for not understanding the world more because they're accepting, they're understanding the world based on the world that they know and they, they grew up in and they understand, right? Their parents set their values and expectations, whether they were there or not, their yeah. values were set to growing up throughout life, right? Those are the behaviors that they've inherited. And as yeah. they started learning more about certain aspects, they start understanding and valuing different things. Or like one yeah. of the best things about my entire divorce was uh, at a peak before everything started collapsing, I was making like 16 to almost 20 grand a month between work and side hustles. And after everything crashed, like I barely make like four grand a month. And it was a massive reset of what my, my values to my day were. And I, you know, I was like, I'm buying the best thing of everything because I can, and I'm going to do this and do whatever I want. And I had a three car garage. I couldn't fit a car because it was full of crap. And then like, I had all these values and I was like, I had all these things that I valued, but they were all monetary and I didn't catch it all. But then when everything collapsed and I had to reset my life, I went back to being broke and getting the bare minimum. And when I was, so, I was so depressed, I couldn't work. Like I was interviewing and people are just like, you could see how depressed they were to talk to me because of how depressed I was externally. And that was one thing that I don't think like my ex ever noticed or understood was like, I can barely function as a human being because I'm barely functioning as a human being. Well, that's an another thing that a lot of people lost through just time itself and you have to you have to train yourself to do it now is people watch and, it, and it's it sounds fucking creepy as hell but when you people watch you start understanding people's mannerisms and everything like that 
It was like I had to I had to do it because I was working in a correction uh, as a correctional officer. Yeah, I used to do a lot of watching. Yeah, I had to I had to do that just to, everybody's like, oh, you're just doing it because you're creepy. No, I had to do it because I had to try to save my own life. Because if a person had a bad day, they either kill themselves or kill me. Yeah. And and that's just that's just it. And yeah. it, it was it was one of those things. It's uh, a lot of people that come to me like, why is it that you notice things off of people? I was like, one, I had to train myself to do it. It's a survival skill now. Yeah. And, and two, you seem more empathetic towards other human beings. And I, I hate to say it, just human beings, period. But other people, other human beings, you seem more mm -hmm. empathetic because you look at them and you're like, you're, I'm noticing that you are having trouble with this or you're having trouble right now in this day and age. And I'm wondering, would you like to get anything off your chest? That's that's the nicest way to put it. But in all reality, I probably end up going, hey, you you look at fucking shit. What's wrong? Yeah. But it's the same concept. It's just one. Yeah. Just different shorter. wording. Yeah. That's communication skills right there. That's one thing your podcast is probably you, you may not realize you've been doing it for three years. You're becoming a better communicator when you're starting to connect with other people. Oh, no, I, I have. It, it, uh, it was a whole. OK, the whole reason why. I, I stopped talking to people in general because I had a lot of bad things happen in my life. One of the things yeah. was I had a, uh, I, I was dating this, uh, I wasn't dating. I was watching this little girl. Uh, she was 18 month old, old, but her mother had to have a babysitter. And eventually, uh, you know, if you're watching a kid, no matter what, if it's not yours, you, you know, you're making sure she's all right and everything. Well, after about two years, uh, about two years or so, uh, I found out that she, the the mother was doing drugs, and she was just she would leave the baby there for probably a week and a half. I had I ended up contacting the grandmother, and after Jesus. two and after two months, uh, I, to, I I told her I was like, hey, I can't do this anymore. You're 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 being really irresponsible. I've already contacted uh, the child's grandmother. Uh, we're getting steps to get the baby taken away from you because of your situation right now. Either you change, or it's like you'll never find me. Blah blah blah. Well, two months later, uh, the boyfriend that she was dating bashed the baby's head in because they were she both like fucked up in the head. I went to go to visit her into the hospital and uh the doc I, I i i from what i heard is she was sick so i went up there and i saw all the stuff and everything and my mind just went in it's like oh she's on life support this is bad and my brain went to the protective part and i almost did something horrible but i i held I held the child's hand while the doctor pulled off the uh, uh, life support Jesus. because I was the only person that uh, anybody knew. I mean, I mean, even her own family was like, "No, he's the one that took care of her. He needs to hold her hand." And they were Jesus. like, "Who is this guy?" I mean, even the the, the father wasn't even in the baby's life or anything. Basically, I was the adopted father. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, that broke me for about two years. Yeah, I could see that. And then I, they, my friends were like, "Man, you, you have a lot to say. You have a lot of stuff to uh, communicate, and you stop communicating with everybody. You need to go back to where we want you back. This is the best way you can do it, and, and this is how I do it. I, is it? it. It really did help. Uh, it took me a while, and uh, I've gained a lot of good friends and a lot of good people that you know uh, I hang out with now, or I just you know." Communicating uh, in general, I was like, uh, I was talking to this one guy, and the whole re the whole reason why is because of the psychos and sociopaths. Uh, his scout leader was the BTK killer, and uh, BTK. I don't. I'm not familiar with that uh, BTK. Uh, bondage, uh, bondage, torture, kill. He was a serial oh, killer in uh, uh, Kansas City. Jesus. 
He even killed his uh, the BTK killer. Even killed his dog. Jesus. And and we were we were having this conversation, and uh, I don't I don't know why, but after an hour, what well, talking to military people, uh, just two people that were in the military, we end up going into conspiracy theories. <laughs> and we were just we'll have a whole conversation for like another five hours because I, I, like I said, it, it, we cut the show for about an hour and a half. Yeah. And then in the next five hours, we're talking conspiracy theories on on stuff that's happened in the world or or JFK or something like that. Yeah. And uh, and, and what what's what, what's funny about it is is uh he showed I was like, hey dude, what what what's with the paddles? Cause I know Marines do paddles for uh uh their companies, like it's a sh- it's their shadow box. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what's, what's with the paddle? He shows me the paddle. I was like, oh, because the way he was explaining what he did in the Marine Corps was he was first division or no, oh, first platoon, first division. He was a Marsoc Raider. Oh, okay. If if, if I didn't see the patch, because I like I like the patch because of the skull and and stars. Yeah. This is the reason why I remember that patch. I was like, they're bo crew, right? No, uh, t- all technicality. They're Marine Corps, uh, Marine Corps, uh, special uh, special operations. Okay. They're trying to. Think uh, but yeah, it, it it's like 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 I try to explain to people when 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 how how small a group that the military is is like they always uh, like a friend of mine is like once they say uh, they were in the military you talk for like hours with them I was like yeah because we have a connection we've all been fucked by the government. <laughs> And it's ha- it I, is hard I stopped watching the news because of that. I was I was in Iraq and we were sitting there watching something on CNN, and I'm like, we literally just did that, and that is wrong what they're announcing. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like, I'm yeah. not doing it. I can't do it. I'm not watching the news anymore. And I have yeah. ever since never like I don't like watching the news because it's a narrative of a group of people who want you to see things in a certain perspective. Try and when try you to realize that. that Try saying that, and then you want to do be part of a press. Oh God! Like, well, that's a, well, that's a realization though. As you realize that when you go and you express, so this is like comes down to communication too, right? Because mm-hmm. you're communicating something, and the way I emphasize to people if they're communicating successfully, I always ask them. I say, they're like, well, they don't understand. So my definition, first thing to point out is, are they receiving things the way you want them to? This is like one of the things that I am pushing really hard to try to make sure I understand as I'm pushing the products out that I'm I'm building is, is it being received the way I want it to? Because communication is not just you saying things out loud in a smart way that people might understand. It's them receiving it. If they're not receiving the way you're communicating, you're not communicating. And it it, it is to the point. Well, there's like a couple of factors in, in, in communicating with somebody. Uh, one factor, is, and these are like worst care scenarios. One, yeah. uh, if they're intelligent, if they if you have to dumb it dumb the uh, the information down, you have to dumb it down. Sometimes you just like you get so used to something, knowing something, and and, and dumbing down is kind of a worst case scenario. But you're so used to knowing these things. It's like I can tell you exactly what you need to do, and I have this with one of my hosts that I I'm trying to train him to do, uh, because he's doing good at messing with the algorithm for YouTube videos and everything. But yeah. I tell him it's like, hey, you need to do hashtags and you need to do uh, ads, like doing uh, on other things. You need to propagate these people and that you're interviewing and everything, and get basically you're getting their stuff. Uh, looked at by the people that look at you yeah and you have to dumb it down and i'm not trying to you know say the person's stupid i'm just saying he doesn't understand 
because he's well you know, let's he's, let's break down what dumb it down really means right it means sim- saying it in a simplified way so that they can comprehend it no matter their intelligence level yeah but you don't want to say right? all those words that you just said. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you want to yeah. say it, but that's the whole point of communication that's it. so i started making it a new year's resolution of mine is every year i'm like you know what i'm going to concentrate on my level of communication my ability to use words and my ability to write words is uh, how effectively am I communicating? And if you want to be an effective communicator, it has nothing to do with tort. It's not a hundred percent to do with the way you communicate because you need to understand how they're receiving things. So if you're trying to go out, that's why like most of the marketing material, you know, I, Alex Hermosi to talk about his product pitching and stuff. You need to dumb it down to a fifth grade level because it's the consumption it's how easy is it to consume and understand? Like, is it taking a lot of thinking to understand? Or does it take a lot of like words so that I understand? Well, that was the same thing when I, when I was going through, when I was learning uh, journalism when I was in high school, they, they just said that yeah. it was like, don't write it. Like you're like super intelligent. Cause that's not your audience. Your audience is uh, effectively reading at a fifth grade level. And, uh, the other, the, the other thing you gotta you gotta you gotta learn when you're talking to somebody or trying to communicate with somebody is that person of the right mind or what do you, they, mean? Uh, you could be talking to a schizophrenic and they don't even know if you're real or not i mean it, it's it, it's a funny thing to think about it but there's some people out there that they're communicating uh to you but they don't know if you're going to harm them or going to help them their fire flight is so messed up yeah it, it i mean yes i joke about it but i i've had to do it like both in a in a job scenario and both in real life and that real life stuff's really weird yeah but yeah there another factor is is it's like what you've been saying this entire time is your expectation for them to understand what you're saying part of you or and and they're just not getting it and that's the reason why you're getting frustrated yeah well so one thing that actually helped me solidify that thought process was teaching my kid right oh, okay. he's six my son right now is six so I, I'll, I'll sit down and i'll have these conversations with them and i'll try to explain like well do you understand why i need you to behave this way at certain times do you understand why I need you to see things this way? <clears throat> because I'm trying to emphasize certain points across, but then I realized that like half the time when I explain things like last night, I tried to explain, he back talked to me and said something like after I asked him to do something for like the 27th time, he was like, well, you don't need to be rude about it. And <laughs> I'm like, I have asked you 27 times to do this one thing. And you finally, until I got in there and shut it off on you, you finally got it done. But it was like, that's rude. I was trying to explain to him like how that's rude and why I'd understand that it's rude. And I'm trying, I try to avoid that because I said so factor. It's hard. It is because all you're doing when you're saying I said so is I don't want to explain to you the reason for you to understand what I'm doing or teaching you. That's it, all it is. It's like one, it's hard for you because at the moment you're already pissed off. Yeah. You already don't want to deal with this shit. Yeah. And 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 two, th- that's basically it. I mean, I, you're already at the stage to where you give no fucks. Well, I would and, actually add in there's there's a possibility that the reason you're not explaining it is because you don't actually understand why. You're just following that because that's what you were taught. That 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 is a good factor too. That's another one that I, I find some people fall into is that they don't understand what they're doing because this is something they were raised with. This is the way you behave in these situations. Okay. But I don't, I want to, so like, I want to raise my kid to follow the rules, be a good human in society and contribute in a positive way, but push back on certain things because just because someone says it doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's a fact. And even if it is a fact, is it still a fact that you, well, that, that's a hard one to describe because it's like, is this something that you need to be following to a T or is this just something that is the way it is? 
And I don't want to get, I don't want to raise a kid who's super compliant a hundred percent of the way. I want him to push back. I want him to be a little bit of a rule breaker. So it's like, Hey, I'm not following into your shenanigans because I know you're abusing your, your situation. We're supposed to be robots. Don't, don't tell exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I try to avoid that. No, I no, I totally understand that because you there. There's times that where he's like, why, "Why is it if they go out and like, why is this wrong? Well, why is this wrong? The, if you question yourself, you might be in the wrong in that situation." I've I've actually done that in front of him. I've been like, "Well, oh, it's actually not a bad thing. I just don't like it." So, because that's the only reason I don't like it, you know what? I can't argue with it because you're doing your own thing. And just well, because it's an opinion I hold, I'm not forcing you to live to my opinion that is an object or a subjective opinion, right? It's your opinion. Yeah. This yeah. is mine. This is yours. You like it. I don't. I'm not going to force you to like what I like because it's not the way the world works. It's the way it's not it- supposed to work. <laughs> it's totally true i mean there's time ta- i mean I, I try to explain this to a person uh when i was in uh uh fort worth i was at a restaurant and this guy came up and uh he was just trying to have a conversation and and i had a uh, he he's like well you carry a gun are you scared of people I'm like that's not the reason why i carry it and he's like well, why do you carry it then hey, if you're not for i can talk to people yeah. I cannot talk to a baby rattlesnake that crosses my path where I'm doing my jog. <laughs> and that happened just recently. I mean, it oh, it scared the holy crap out of myself. That's well, right. it, it didn't scare the holy crap out of myself. It scared the crap out of myself. It was yeah. it was one of those things that you don't expect it. You're 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 going out through life thinking everything's all hunky dory, and then murder mother nature comes in. It's like we're, we're, we're gonna see what if you're if you're mad enough. I wasn't. I was screaming like a little girl when I was firing, but I'm still firing. <laughs> I, that's how it was. If I it wasn't fire, no one would have heard it. Yeah. But it, it's just one of those things. It's like I'm I'm a decent communicator. I can talk to people. I'm not scared of people. I'm not scared of going to certain areas, of towns, and everything. Communication is hard, though. I think the whole world revolves around communication. I think one of the biggest problems we have is the fact that people aren't on the same understanding and definition. Like shared definitions tends to be one of the biggest problems. I hate politics. I cannot follow it. It's so annoying. And the fact that people think politics are acceptable the way they are is like that's even more depressing. For anyone who has a sense of pride being in politics, I feel bad. Yeah, I've okay. Here's the situation though. I was like, I I I follow politics. You don't follow politics. I don't, yeah. I I know this. Now there's times that you know I'll I'll I might slip up and I'll go, hey, did you hear about XYZ? I mean, even even in this one, I did hint on a little political stuff that's happening right now. But It was part of the conversation that we were having. Now, am I going to go in and it's like, oh no, now we're going to talk all politics? You would, uh, I would, I would expect you saying that, and going, well, I got to go, I got to leave, I got, you know, to buy a watch because apparently I don't have one. And I would totally <laughs> understand that because I'm, I'm talking something that you don't like. Yeah, but see, the thing is, what I've learned is I don't. I, like I don't run away from it. I'll just be like, "Hey, I'm not into that conversation. I'm not enjoying that." Or like, just like you said earlier, was that, "Hey, I didn't enjoy that, so I'm not going to repeat it." Yeah, right. But the thing is, is I don't this understanding that someone wants to talk about something that you're either not familiar with or uncomfortable with is not a reason to run away. It's just a reason to have a conversation even more. To be honest, well, it's In my opinion. It judging and you get into that kind of conversation is like why, uh, why do you believe this way? Oh, and, that, and that's yeah, yeah. and that's a lot of things that's that's happening with people right now is they can't face to face communicate a lot. 
I, I, I honestly don't like doing this all too much. I'd rather have a person in house, but I'm not super rich, so I can't have you come in, fly you in, and on a private jet or, or at least coach. I might give you coach. We'll even just well, cover the cost for somebody to get there. Yeah. But having a person like face to face, oh my God, it's so much fun. Well, do you know what reason why? One of the reasons why. 70% like 70% of your communication. I think it's, if, if I'm right, the number is 70%. 70% of your communication is through body language. Yeah. You and two it's actually a little more feel, than, isn't it? I don't remember honestly, I don't remember to be honest. I, I just probably looked it up. Though, talking, I'm gonna find this out. I'm, I'm yeah, that's, because your your body language. So when I was doing bodyguard work after the Marine Corps, I became a bodyguard. I was doing executive protection, traveling with celebrities and CEOs. Uh, I started doing a lot of um, like body language understanding. Like I started looking into micro expressions and understanding speech patterns and trying to deter threats or concerns when you're interacting with people because it's your job to keep certain people safe. Uh -huh. So if you can determine if someone's a threat before they're a threat, you have the ability to deter the situation before anything happens. So if you learn about how to understand certain things, but I started learning about body language and started addressing that and it was just like you become a natural you become very intuitive and em empathic when you start understanding how people are feeling based on the way they're behaving right because then you because most people will say one thing but behave another way yeah uh i mean you look at the the movement of their eyes the the twitchiness of the body but some people might just have twi uh ticks. And but they're noticeable when you start diving into it and start understanding. You're like, okay, well, why are they doing that? And and, yeah. and I hate to say that some of it is in movies that you learn this stuff. It's like if a person's like going like this, they're probably on some kind of drug or anything. But yeah. or that person could have like you know actual legitimate uh, uh, itch. And that's the reason why you know. You know, you look at the abrasions on a person's skin, it, and this is going like like super super high in uh, having communication with uh, someone, especially when when you're trying to calm them, uh, get them to calm down to a, a a reasonable level, and having a person that's like, "Hey, can you calm down?" It does not ever work. <laughs> they get a little bit more frustrated with themselves because then you just told them they're being. Uh, erratic and it, get, and it yeah. gets a lot worse and like oh i am oh crap no but but it comes that comes yeah that yeah there's a lot of things that go into that oh dude it's even okay fit uh is saying this according to researchers of albert uh melbourne i can't even pronounce that name uh body language counts for 55 percent of face-to-face -face communication while vocal communications account for 38 and words only account for seven percent so much of the communication is 93 percent is like uh okay vocal communication accounts for 38 55 is face-to-face -face communication so that's uh body language and only seven percent is words. I don't that know. Makes how. Sense. No, what doesn't make sense is the verbal communication and the words. Is it just the understanding and intelligence of the words? Is seven percent? I think it's the usage of the words. Because if you think about, so okay. yeah, we, we would have it. this con if we were having this conversation over again. I think our entire conversation would be different. Well, okay. Like, uh. The best, the best example I could possibly do uh, is, uh, what's your wo uh, word for uh, a soda or a pop or Coke? I mean, we have several different things. I, I could just say, yeah. So yours is soda, and, and certain part, parts of the world is Coke. Okay, what yeah. kind of Coke do you want? Or I understand. Yeah. yeah, I understand what you're uh, you're getting at. You want this item. There's a variety of this item, and I understand that you which one of these do you want? But other people is like, hey, 
And give me a Coke. Okay, what kind? What do you mean, what kind? I don't, I don't, just a regular Coke. Oh, okay. If I didn't put that regular there, you know, what, what kind of Coke? What if I just said, what kind of Coke do you want? If I said that, it would confuse the person again. It's like, well, well, depending on their understanding of the word, right? And what if they said it's like Dr. Pepper? Well, I don't have Dr. Pepper, I have Coke. What if I said, you know, do you want a Coke? Okay, yeah, uh, I'll take a Dr. Pepper. And that that's happened to me a, a couple of times. Well, it's happened to me as well. Like so, someone a cola was one that got me. Like someone oh, they yeah. received cola, and I'm like, oh, cola, Coca Cola is the only thing that I know of a cola in the word. Uh, all right, I'll get you a Coke. So I went and bought him a Coke, brought it back, and like, what? I wanted a Pepsi. What the fuck are you giving me a Coke for? <laughs> and I'm like, you said cola. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, cola is Pepsi. I'm like, ah. so this is actually one of the reasons why I'm doing the whole start with me company and getting in doing a dating app too, is because you're establishing a foundational understanding and shared meaning. And once you do that, that's when you start really communicating, when you start sharing the same definitions. You, oh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Cause that, that would just be a, it would, I've, I've always had like uh uh, I've uh, seen these videos to where the person just gets totally confused about uh, just they thought X, Y, Z was always X, Y, Z. But when you tell them that it's not, their parents were just messing with their heads. And, it, and this even involves the uh, sexual natures and everything. It's like, hey, you can't do this. The funniest joke that wasn't a joke was... Uh, a friend of mine was telling me about the, no, it was, I know where I got it from. Uh, I think it was clerks too. And he's like, I can't, she, she can't, she can't do anything. I, this, this is ridiculous how I explain something, but she's like, he, I can't do anything with her because her, uh, her, her parents said the pussy troll will defend off my penis and stab my penis. And that's the reason why I can't have sex with her right now. <laughs> you laugh right now, but there's some people that believe that shit for like the longest time. Like corn, that's flakes, cool. like corn flakes is the solution not to masturbate. You laugh, but that's how, that's how uh, corn flakes was introduced into the world. It was, was it to really? stop you from that. Google that shit. I'll have to. I'll definitely have to Google this one. Uh, but no, so, uh, that, you know, that makes that's. But that's a lot of the what exactly what I'm trying to do is get everyone on a the same to get everyone exposed to a shared definition, so that the conversation can start. Right, like I I see this the see this company that I'm making and the products that I'm making as the gateway, the start of bringing people together because it's sharing communications. It's understanding oneself, the most valuable and important thing when showing up in relationships, right? Cause the only thing you can work on is you. The most important factor is you can, is you, you need to be like, you need to, the way they describe it. Like you need to have a full cup before you can share your cup with everyone else. Right. Yeah. Unless it's so whiskey. You, Whiskey. Yeah, then you, you share whatever you got. Yeah. Um, but you have to have that minimum standard that everyone's aware. Oh, you have to have that certain level. I want to get people to be confident, happy, and share a definition at the very least, so the conversation can start. Yeah, that's all. Like that's the number one big thing I really want to get going is like getting the conversation started. I don't well, want to ever know. fall into a realm where it's like, this is the way it is. That's, I just want the conversation started so that you can find your, your state of being in there based off of an equal line that we're all saying like, Hey, that's what's the standard. That's what everyone's expecting at the very minimum. Let's share this definition and then we can rewrite and structure things on our own. But that's between me, you, this person or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's also, it's also that, that factor of, uh, I had a crush on you and I didn't, and I had a crush on you. I was like, you know, two people had a crush on each other, but they didn't communicate that. 
So they they never got to together, and they could have had like a beautiful relationship, or they could be like Bonnie and Clyde. You never know. Yeah, I just had a conversation with somebody from high school the other day, and uh, I messaged them, and I was just like, "Wow, I was like, you've really grown into a beautiful person." And they messaged me back, and they're like, "You have no idea how long I've wanted to hear that from you." Like, I, I've had a crush on you since high school, and like, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, I remember having a crush on you. But it was just like, well, what would the world have been like if if we all followed through on communicating our desires and our our thoughts, and communicating better, or just be a better painter? Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've we've gone two hours and everything. We're probably gonna we'll have a little bit of communication after this, but uh, yeah. we we we've gotten the nitty gritty of what what your website is, and I. I honestly, I just want to check it out. How, how, if if you need a beta tester, I want to beta test this. Just to it's already it. available for beta testing. So right now you can sign up for the web version at startwithme.co. Uh, I didn't get startwithme.com, unfortunately, but startwithme.co. You can go and sign up on the web um, and you can do the application through the web platform, but we'll also have it in the app store and the Google Play store within the next couple of weeks it will be available those, to download those things are expensive i did not realize how expensive those apps are just put yeah, it for, on app for just, just getting on the app there yeah um they're actually fairly cheap you can basically do them for free practically i have to check i'm actually about to do the paperwork today to get them into the app store to oh. start the admin side of the paperwork um but usually if i'm correct you can do it for free huh Huh. Unless you're hiring somebody else to do it, then it's going to cost money. Oh, okay. I think that's that's where I get confused on stuff because a lot of stuff was like even websites. I was like, I was so avert to doing our own website. And then finally someone's like, it costs like $12 a year. Oh, I spent about 400 a couple of years ago. And I just like, I had to cut it. And now you're well, yeah, that. that well, also that that goes from like technology evolving from where it was then to where it is now too, right? Right now, you could start a website, start a running company. So the domain itself is anywhere like eleven to twelve dollars or twenty bucks nowadays. It's actually gone up. Um, but the domain itself, you got to pay for every year, and then the website is a maintenance fee. And if you do it on a platform that's just like pre-built templates. You can go and build a website for with no experience for almost nothing. Hmm. Like so, I built um, start with me. I came up with the idea probably about a year ago, uh -huh. and I was flushing through all of the ideas of how to apply it, how to get this thing done. Like I just I came up with the concept that I wanted to take everything I've learned through my own personal journey, getting back into the dating world. And then everything I've learned from that and then try to help people with things. And then as I started going through and trying to iterate, like how do you help change society over a period of time? How do you help change the foundation of how people are doing things? And I came up with the concept of implementing the knowledge into products that people are already used to using. Okay. And then giving them the incentive to do it, right? Because dating apps, what happens with those? Yeah, this the journey I've created requires a little bit of work. There's like a three to four hour gateway of getting into this dating pool in order to go through your personal discovery journey. And that's like four hours is if you're super slow like I am. But if you're fast, I'm pretty sure you could do it in as fast as an hour. It's pretty quick, but it's it's like... The whole, but the thing is, there's a little bit of a gateway in order to get there. And I forgot what I was talking about. I don't know why. <laughs> um, you were actually you're you're talking about how easy it is to uh, build a website or oh yes yeah that's right. So Jeez, I I, had, uh, yeah, I was getting man, it was your sexy. What it was. <laughs> Thank you. In my eye. <laughs> yeah, uh, the drew way it droops. <laughs> the way it droops. <laughs> um, uh, so I flushed up the concept for about seven or eight months. And then about five months ago, I started, I chose to pull the trigger. So I started building out the whole beta program through a Google doc. Like, Hey, let's, let's send a group of people through the journey and see how it affects them as they go. But then, um, somebody introduced me to a new code platform and I was like, Oh shit, I could build the app in like two or three weeks. So I went and oh, built okay. an app in two or three weeks. 
And um, at the beginning of July, July like 4th or 5th, we opened it up to beta users. So we're trying to get about 500 beta users into the app. And then we'll have a in-person dating event in San Francisco because we're going to start the hybrid factor of doing in-person is mm -hmm. we're going to be doing um, singles events in local areas where we have large clusters of users. Right. Okay. So it tends to be like big city areas. Right. So we're going to start in San Francisco. And that's not to collect. Is that what? What data are you trying to collect from that or data? Uh, well, so that's mostly just we live in a hybrid of tech in real life and trying to build the dating community in an environment that allows you to actually meet people in person. Because okay. the, one of the big things with dating is, is like the conversation. I think this is what a lot of problem is. A lot of problems are coming through, but we're still I'm still trying to flush out all of the problems when it comes to online dating and stuff like that. But a lot of it has to do is like the interacting with somebody isn't serious until you meet them in person. Yeah. Or tend to be what I find is, is like the vibe. Once you get the vibe check and you're like, all right, this is somebody I actually want to spend time around or not, you know, tends to come down on your in person meetings. Yeah. And, and then, then another yeah. problem that you have though, is you have a lot of, uh, I'll just call it, what people understand right now is bots. People are just trying to get you to go to a different website and everything. How, how would yeah. you actually combat that? Um, like bot people filling up the app with bots. Well, yeah. one, the bot now has to go through that personal journey. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the bot has to complete the journey, which isn't really hard right now. There's not a lot of things in there to really roadblock it. But no, there will I, be things integrated and there's items as we go. Because right now, all I'm trying to do is validate the concept and prove that it's valuable and has purpose and an, okay, a real buy-in with an audience. Like there's an actual audience that wants to go out here and use it. Oh, okay. So you're, okay, you're basically uh, trying to figure out if uh, you have an item that people want to purchase. Yes. So... Because the thing is, I've talked to right well over 400 plus people now at this point and had full blown conversations about the app. And only two people out of all of them have that makes it super easy because it's only been two people who have been like, ah, I don't know about that. And both of the responses were, I don't know if I'm ready to understand myself like that. And okay. That, it's, it's, it's one of those things that the person, uh, doesn't feel comfortable with the dating idea yet no so the kickback was is i don't want to learn i don't want to understand myself because i know i'm problem oh okay yeah, well, okay. It's, it's the people who refuse to reflect on themselves and do the work yeah or they're just scared and, of themselves right there yeah and their first response where i don't know if i want to learn about myself like that like i don't want to go and see like actually give a validation to how i show up because then i have you know, to work on you know what you know it's really sad some sometimes those people are actually the people that have themselves more put together and are actually the kindest people in the world and it's really sad because they don't they don't feel that they validate their kindness that they're giving out in the world and when you actually show them in the mirror and they just realize what a good person they actually are or they're a racial psychopath or they're I mean, both oh yeah you could be both they've learned to cover it up in one way yeah, and then then you just realized how much you're lying to yourself too. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but it's I'm, all about understanding yourself, though. Yeah, uh, and we'll put the website and everything on the description, and we'll we'll have it populate to uh, get you. On, and this conversation is going on your YouTube uh, also, so we'll just populate and figure out how to connect everything, but. Thank you, uh, Josh, uh, Jonathan. Damn it. Fuck that up. John and Jonathan Kent's my favorite character. I love the, the father figure in Superman. So that's really bad I, on me. He's my favorite. I love that show. Yeah. But thank you all for oh, watching. Thank you all for listening and have a good day. Absolutely.